Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Lion Plays West of Lothen. We're tying up some mysteries here. We were going to the professor's house before we got sidetracked by 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 a surprisingly long quest in that uh, standalone location there. I don't necessarily think that he's going to talk to us. He did not talk to us, but I think we will fabricate a battery. We don't have enough to fabricate a keystone. Sorry, we do have enough to fabricate a keystone. We don't have enough to fabricate another battery. I think I'd rather just save my my scraps for the next keystone. And I'm gonna do it right out here, and then basically we're just gonna wander until we find another monolith, I think. The beeping of your El Vibrato transponder leads you to a hulking robot standing motionlessly out in the desert with the vulture perched on it. Yeah, okay, well, I mean, like, you're really bringing this upon yourself? Uh, if you could perhaps give us enough scraps. Yeah, okay, so we have enough scraps to build the second battery yet, but we're already out here. Why not just uh, hit the map and wander a little bit? I will say, like, I, we've kind of run out of steam as we've gotten a little further on into the game here. Uh, I think we just, maybe through random happenstance, like, solved the quest in Frisco before we should have. Made the third act seem shorter than it should be. Um, and we, we kind of were bereft of mapping locations. So I hope you'll forgive me the dalliances of uh, kind of wandering around here trying to find new quests because we still have open lines We could quote-unquote finish the game But I don't think as you saw in that quote-unquote final cutscene We still have a lot of loose ends to tie up like we got to stop the cows and the necromancer So we're gonna check out the jeweler's cabin Nudged him in the direction to find a cozy looking cabin nested in a copse of pines the ground outside is sparkly and rainbow tinted a telltale side effect of the practice of the jeweler's trade Check it out now Funk soul brother right about now Goblin. I do love the goblin speak. First, let's rob him blind. This is the goblin's bed, maybe? This appears to be their dining table, but they've left out a stack of magazine for customers to look at while they're waiting. They're all in goblin, though. Most of them are goblin celebrity gossip, and the crossword puzzles have already been filled in. Your eyebrows are getting kind of wild. Pluck them. Flush the toilet. I wonder how close we are to flushing every toilet in the game. Oh, hello, a customer! Why, hello, welcome to Master Gerald's Jewelry Shop. Howdy, are you Master Gerald? Oh no, Master Gerald is back there at his workbench. I'm just his assistant and translator. A goblin jewel smith. You betting your britches, Sonny, and not forgetting it. He says that's right, the finest jeweler in the territory. Well, what do you know? I don't see anything on display, though. Master Gerald only does bespoke work. If you bring in a sufficiently valuable gemstone, he'll craft it into a fine ring for you for a fee. No trash rocks. Well, here's what I got. We got... I mean, we got a lot. Let's try the super dense coal. You got an item, coal ring. 40% extra meat gains. Uh, Fluvius Emerald. Plus three AP and plus five speed, and might as well, why not, right? Silicone ring, plus 11 mysticality. Bah, all of trash and garbage being. Master Gerald apologizes, but there's nothing here he can work with. Dude, I mean, that's pretty good. Our current ring is plus nine pistol damage, which is good. Um, and we'll probably stick with that, to be honest with you, but it's, it's not bad equipment, like, no question. Uh, can I, can I speak to the goblin directly? No. Alright. I mean, still worth it. We got some rare items, although we don't have very much space, uh, or very much meat left, I should say. You see familiar outline of an army fort and zag Tim toward it to investigate. The sign says, Fort Unnecessary. Don't do it, Tim. It's a, you're too close to the edge. Who do you think you are? A prog rock band from the early 1980s? Fort Unnecessary. A hairy-looking young woman in a military outfit darts in front of the door as you enter. Oh no, I can't be having any more misfits in this jerk ward. You can either swear to me that you're halfway competent, heck, even a quarter, and that you'll help sort this crew out of no-hopers, or you can turn right back around and march out double time. Sure, I'll help. All right, I'm gonna hold you to that promise. Come on in, I'm Captain Harriet Davenport. My name's Northernlian. What's the problem, Cap? Problems. Welcome to Camp Fubar, where the army's all idiots and rejects are sent so they're out of the way. Where all the army's idiots rejects are sent so they're out of the way. I have had it right up to my eyeballs trying to run this place. Please help these morons figure out their malfunctions so they can muster out of here and leave me in peace. 
Good lord. Can you give me some details? You'll need to talk to them individually for more information, but the brief is we got a scout who's blind as a bat, a cook who can't figure out how to make corned beef hash on toast, a guy who can't load and fire a cannon without it blowing up or maybe shooting backwards, a guy who somehow, and I can't figure it out for the life of me, is too bow-legged to ride a horse, and the kid who was sent here because he can't figure out how to tie a bow tie. Oh, and just to put the icing on the cake, we have infinite goblins living in our storage shed. Wow, okay, I begin to see the scope of your complaint. Pal, you are not just whistling Dixie. So what did you do to get sent here? You can hear teeth grinding as she growls at you. Do not ask. Okay, well, let's, let's start it up. This guy squints real hard as you approach. Howdy, do I know you? Your fuzzy silhouette don't seem familiar. Nah, I'm just passing through. What do you do here? Well, I'm supposed to be a scout, but I went and broke my only pair of glasses. Without them, I can't see a dang thing. I could try to get you a new pair. I'd be much obliged. I hear tell there's a jeweler not too far from here. He could probably grind me a pair of lenses. Just tell him to make them thick as a dickens. Well, let's knock that out first so I don't forget. This guy's gonna run me out of meat. I can live with it. Uh, an ancient seaweed draped skeleton is shambling toward you, hissing and moaning. Oh, huh, I guess we must be near the beach. Hiss. How do you determine where the desert stops and the beach begins? Hiss. I don't really know how to tell the difference between desert and sand and beach sand. Hass. <laughs> well. Dude, if we ever face one enemy, you could give them a million HP. We're gonna win. We got a sea skull. Plus 13 spell damage. A lot of unique skeletons in this game. Hello. Again. I need glasses. I need a pair of eyeglasses for a nearly blind watchtower lookout. Can you guys make them for me? The clerk translates the question for Master Gerald, who thinks about it and then nods. Having some old soda bottles for grinding down should working fine. He says yes. We have some, some we have some glass of the finest optical quality. Is 500 meat acceptable? Sure, why not? The clerk invites you to have a seat in their living area while Master Gerald gets to work cutting and grinding some glass in the lenses and setting them into wire frames. You flip through a goblin magazine while you wait. The lead article seems to be about social interaction with humans and the value of occasionally pretending to be dumber than you actually are. Okay, close enough for government working. Master Gerald has completed your spectacles with the utmost degree of craftsmanship. Here you are. Very thick spectacles, and you lose 500 meats. That's fine. I mean, it's kind of a lot, but no big deal. Before you know it, you're mesmerized by a scintillating rainbow of shiny multicolored scales. A moment later, you realize you've fallen for the oldest trick in the book. Specifically, the book about how Frisco Vipers trap their pay because you're surrounded by Frisco Vipers. I mean, that's... You ain't kidding. These are Ooh, what? That did like next to no damage. All right, well, you start with some good medicine. Good medicine is what you need. A world. Well, I mean, I can't be too mad about two hits, honestly. Might as well just stop one. We spread out all of our damage amongst three enemies, which is not a smart play. Whiff. Ooh, that's not that bad. It's not that bad. Still not that bad. You know what? Maybe I'm an idiot. If we want to fan hammer an enemy, we might want to shoot the fan hammer at the enemy at the back, and then it will work. Yeah, I might be a moron. Okay, where's our uh, emetic? because we can free ourselves from this poison. This will cure you of poison. Done, dude. All right, um, we do not need to fan hammer, I think. We might as well just, uh, good medicine? Your love is like good medicine. We don't need to do that. I mean, we could just use like, Infinity Trauma Kits as well. So, we want to make sure that we're killing... At least two enemies this turn. How much HP do you have? 56. So I think that, like, a Fan Hammer will definitely land this kill. And then your shot... Not gonna land this kill, which makes me very unhappy. Because I might die. In fact, I think I will die now that I look at it because of the poison damage. 
I'm a little mad, but that's okay. We're now angry. But we'll continue on where we're going here. I'm a little upset. Started losing in combat a little bit. All just to get this guy's freaking glasses. Hey, have we met? I can't see a dang thing without my glasses. Yeah, I'm the one who went to find you a new pair. All right, any luck with that? Try these on. Well, I'll be. Never realized what a dump this place was. He climbs up to the top of the watchtower and peers out over the countryside. They work. I can see a dang thing. Problem solved. Howdy, Cap. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Start by going inside. The general... Uh, the, sorry, there's a nameplate on the desk that says, General, what's his name? Investigate. You get an item. Medal of Adequacy. Goes on your lapel. Yeah, and seven extra moxie, among other stats. It's pretty good. H howdy. Hi, what's wrong? Oh, gee, Willikers. I had a pretty good job as the general's personal assistant, but I got fired and reassigned here. What happened? Everything was fine at first. I'm pretty good at scheduling, and I can write shorthand. I'm an A-plus boot polisher. But then the general went and decided he'd look more serious and sophisticated with a bow tie, and he expected me to do the tying for him. No good? No, I can do the sheep shank and a bow line and a clover hitch, but for the life of me, I can't get the bow tie to look right. The general sent me out here with one to practice on and said not to come back till I got it. Get dusted, young. Okay, here, grab the two ends like this, right? You want this side a little shorter, and that end crosses over top, and then up and, oh, under and up while the other side does a sort of zigzag, see? Then you bring the upper bit straight down and back around, and it folds under there, and then you pull them tight. Got it? Let him try. The two of you go back and forth a few times until he finally gets it right without poking himself in the eye. I think I've got it! Thanks a lot! Wait, wait till I show the general! He runs out of the building, waving the bow tie in the air, 60 experience, and another problem solved by the great North Thurnlian. We're not looting their supplies, because now we have a... Conscious for some reason. Howdy, private. Cooker. How appropriate. Well, it would be if I knew how to cook even a little bit. What seems to be the trouble? We've only got two ingredients here, and I can't for the life of me figure out how to combine them. What are the ingredients? Corn, beef, hash, and toast. Try to help him with a metaphor. What have you thought of the toast as a shingle? Yeah. And the corned beef as... Shinola? So I should put the corned beef hash under, no next to, no, I don't, okay, let's try again. What if you thought of the toast as a shingle, and the corned beef as a hole in the ground? Okay, let's try again. What if you thought of uh, toast as a shoe? And then, of course, I put the corned beef toast, corned beef on the toast, just like Shinola on a shoe. I don't know what that means, but sure, all in a day's work. Loot, oh, no, no loot. All right, many problems solved. How do they call me? They call me Private Bowlegs. I can see why you seem uncomfortable. You ain't kidding. Look at my legs. They're bent so far out I can't hardly touch both knees at once. Walking hurts like a dickens. The captain said it keeps you from riding a horse. Yep, they're too wide. A horse slips right out of between them. Hmm. I think I could ride a mule though. What with them being a tad lower to the ground, we could get him a mule, or we could bend his legs back. You don't need a mule, this is fixable. Hold still a minute. Oh, well, okay. With some grunts from you and some cries of pain from him, you normalize his legs. Ow! Great jumping Jiminy, man! Oh, don't be a baby. Look, they're much straighter now. I guess I can't deny that. He winces as he mounts the nearby horse and rides out of the camp. 60 experience. Howdy, what's the haps? I'm supposed to be a cannoneer, but I'm terrible at loading cannons. They always explode, except not the way they're supposed to explode, or else they don't explode at all. Huh. The only time I ever got one to fire at, the cannonball knocked me sergeant's hat off, and he was standing behind me. I still can't figure out how that happened. So they assigned me to this loser squad and said I can't report back for a proper duty until I figured out how to load a cannon right. Help him figure it out, or give him, let's give him the book. We don't need it. He flips through the pages, which have big number diagrams. Or you take the stick back out before you put the cannonball in. Well, that certainly sounds easier. Let him figure it out. He successfully follows along the directions of the book and successfully fires a cannonball over the wall of the fort. Or oh, did it. Wow, great. Thanks a lot. I'm going to go get my new assignment right away. We run this joint. A sign on the front says, important gun storage, no goblins. You open the door to take a peek and naturally the shed is crammed full of goblins. To the ceiling. They're barely recognizable as goblins. You try and talk to them, but they're just babbling incessantly. Dude. A single goblin. Stands no chance. Got goblin absent. I'm assuming that that's... I mean, they said infinite supply of goblins, so... 
Great job, that's everyone dealt with and out of here. And that means I'm finally out of this hellhole too. If we ever cross paths again, I really owe you one. Captain Davenport fri frisbees your clipboard, snaps you a salute, and marches out of the fort. You gain 300 experience. And I am a god. Teach me some more of the language. We've earned it. An angry looking skeleton with a mining pick is stalking you. I guess now that I think about it, most skeletons are pretty angry looking. Now, this combat is silly. But for some reason, I didn't feel the same way about uh, the snakes we fought earlier. You ride past a woman who is running along the desert trail, and although I say running, it is a slow run with an odd loping gait. She's dressed oddly, too. No hat, just a thin strip of fabric tied across her forehead, light clothing, and strange, soft-looking boots that barely even come up to her ankles. Uh, everything all right? Are you running away from something? Something pretty slow, like maybe a desert tortoise, or... No, no, I'm jogging. What? Jogging? I invented it. It's like slow running. Where I'm from, where I'm from, we just walk. It's better exercise if you go faster. Not fast enough to actually get away from anything, though. But full out running wears you out. That isn't as healthy. It's healthier than being eaten by a bear. I look. I'm not being chased by a bear. I've never been chased by a bear. Yes, that's obvious. You're alive and not mangled lumps. This is about physical fitness. Bears aren't an issue. Okay, you're right. Thank you. There aren't many bears out here in the desert. A pack of coyotes, though, you'd be in real trouble. This is a very frustrating conversation. They tear you to shreds even without those goofy looking shoes. Hey, I designed these myself. They are not goofy. They're pretty goofy. I mean, what good are they if you can't even run properly in them? What? They don't prevent, and they certainly aren't going to protect your ankles from coyote bites. They'll be perfectly good for kicking your butt. Gosh, all this exercise has made you kind of belligerent. How about you see if you can catch me? You ride away, the jogger runs after you for a bit, yelling, but as predicted, she can't catch you. Gotta be the shoes. Get extremely dusted. Hey, I would like to find some... I mean, it's, oh, a chest full of metals. Plus nine moxie, that's pretty good. And, whoa, a medical gun. If you don't think about it too much, a pistol is just a more effective syringe. Let's, like, hang out here. Susie, you got anything for me? What do you think we should do next? Any other ideas? She's got no ideas for side quests, dude. We're just kind of wandering around here. Let's go back to the abandoned mine. There's a lot of open space around here. You're ambushed by a cow who was hiding behind a nearby billboard. Big billboard, big cow. My favorite show on TLC. Whoa. You made hamburger of that cow. No, I mean like figuratively. Maybe I should have chosen a different idiom. I can see how that might have been confusing. You get infernal leather. Susie's become stronger, thankfully. We needed that. 337 meat is no joke. And then at this mine... Well, how much experience do we have? 1900? Uh, so I'm gonna level up shooting Annie because I'm an idiot. But it now it fires nine times and costs the same, which seems good. I also feel like we should level the Christ out of good medicine, so maybe it becomes more usable. And, um, I don't know, maybe plus two pistol damage? We're gonna go back to our map and take a little wander here. There's lots of stuff in this area that's not touched right now. Put up another crate. Uh, we've got some random junk. I will say, uh, unless I'm missing some kind of, like, way to get the quest line to progress further, I am kind of getting a little, uh... A little irritated. You're, maybe not the right word, a little dissatisfied with how long it's taken us to uh, finish the job here. Muck Clogged Blunderbuss applies three poison enemies, so it would actually apply nine. And it does 16 and 19 damage. That might be takeable. So right now we're using Smoking Gun. Sets enemies on fire, so it can do 15 fire damage, and it does 13 to 17 damage. So it's a better gun, and it does pistol damage, which is better for us. Oh, sorry, it does uh, poison damage, which is better for us, because we uh, can use that poison damage to triple itself. I know that sounds confusing. It's because I phrased it confusingly. I think I've recorded a, little, or recorded a few too many videos today. Tim gets a little skittish, and a few moments later, you understand why. A low Nordic drone signals the existence of a nearby hive of Viking bees. You hop down and follow your ears to the source. No! We don't have the skill check. 
Come on, just hook me up here. I want to pick up new stuff. I'll, I'll fight the Frisco Vipers and get it, you know, earn myself hopefully a, uh, a little bit of respect here. Like, if we fan hammer this guy, we should get... Yeah, there we go. Two dead. That's what we needed to do. Then we keep one under control. We get bit and probably hurt. But at least we're going to get some redemption before the end of the video here. 14 damage? It's not that bad. Alright, so the one that he shot, we will finish off here. And we should really just go for broke. There's not really much strategy at this point beyond just shoot the snake. I want to see how much poison damage it does, but we're one-tapping these enemies now. Uh, lots of snake stuff. Put it on your hat to add plus three to all stats. It's very good. So right now, um, on our hat, we have plus six moxie. We might rather have plus... Uh, well, the snake skin hat band, what is it? That's plus three to all stats or something? I can't remember. We might have a hat that's better at this point, though, like... Anything that gives me... It's all mysticality. I want... Plus two armor, plus two moxie. Well, what if we did plus two armor, plus two moxie, but then on this we put, a. Uh, Frisco Viper skin. Now we have all stats attached there. That's like a killer hat right there. Plus, we look like a fake Pope, which is just a beautiful little juxtaposition. Okay, we're in uncharted territory. With a spooky combination of hissing, chattering, and clanking, an ancient skeleton rises out of the sand in front of you. He's wearing dented and rusted antique armor and a long handlebar mustache. Must, must be an ancient explorer or would-be conqueror. Hopefully the former, because he doesn't seem to have been much good at the latter. How does your mustache stay on? Hass. Do you use glue? Hass. He will be fought. I'm not going to give him the runaround like a Blues Traveler song. 60 XP and Old Spanish Sabaton. Come on, I'm feeling... Is there really nothing there? What do these dots represent? Uninhabitable space? You come to a treacherous canyon. Fortunately, someone has thoughtfully provided a log for you to cross on. Unfortunately, it isn't as wide as your horse. Carefully lead your horse across. You gain 60 XP. All right. Well, uh, why don't you take me all the way up to Deepest Delve Mine and see what we find along the way? Nothing. Why don't we wander around a little bit? More snakes. What happens if you just surrender? You just gain an effect. Angry. I'm going to give this one more wander. We discover a new location. You see wisps of smoke rising above the pines nearby and spur Tim over to investigate. The source is a little shop nestled deep in the forest, almost as though the proprietor doesn't want customers to find it. You jot down the location on your map so you don't forget where it is. You discover a new map location, Halloway's Hideaway. Halloway, I'm begging you. Advance my quest. We are going to shovel... This forest clean of swirl dro of squirrel droppings. <laughs> Not squirrel droppings. Man, nothing, huh? Oh, howdy! Name's Halloway, Hab Halloway. Sorry for the chittering, I ain't seen another person in a long time. That's not surprising, this place is pretty secluded. What do you do here? Mostly I sell pine cones to squirrels. He frowns. All right. Halloway chews on something he said store away in one of his cheeks. Let me see what you're selling. Dude, maybe the clip-on would have worked. Buy all of the needles. Buy the jar of peanut butter. Reduces your moxie. I was thinking about buying the jar of peanut butter just because we might need it for a quest, but apparently not. You got anything else? Well, see you later. Nothing, huh? Well, I'm kind of at a loss, but we'll be back with another episode tomorrow to try to piece this together. For now, thanks for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed the episode, and yeehaw! People with the West of Loathing on Steam if you're interested. Uh, of course, uh, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. Click the like button if you enjoyed the episode. For now, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.